It's great to see you here. I'm John Zadar, your host of On Top and Hot. This is Monday, July 11th. Now, for those of you who have heard me say this too many times, we've got news over here for you. This is news from the last couple of days that I've gone through. This isn't a news feed. It's news I've picked. The older news is at the top. The newer news is at the bottom. Now, for those of you who haven't been here before, what I do is talk about OTC and penny stocks. Now, a penny stock is any stock under 5 bucks, so they may be on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. I'm looking for stocks that got something going for them. Great headlines, great financials, weird circumstances, and then I bring them to your attention. Now, I do all of my research primarily right here at the otcmarkets.com website. I like this site for one reason, not because it's free, though that's great, not because I don't have to sign in. I love that too. No, I come here because FINRA and the SEC update this site every single day for all the OTC markets. I love that. I do a lot of DD, folks. This saves me a lot of time. Rather than going over to Google, sorting through decades of information for every stock, no. This is where I start. I think you should too. So let's start by looking how the OTC market finished today. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this. I hope that number's right. Oh, God, I'm feeling good. Look at this, folks. Our dollar volume is down today. Our average is $2.1 billion, But you know what? I really don't concern myself with dollar volume. What I do concern myself with is share volume. We are at $13.8 billion. That is almost twice. We were at 7.7 on Friday. We hit a low of 6.2 last week. But two weeks ago, we hit $15 billion. We have been on a downhill run for well over a year. And now we had a big climb, fell, went sideways, and now it looks like we're starting to climb again. Hopefully, we're getting another surge. We could use it. Our trades, eh, not real exciting. I think we got about 20000 more than Friday, and we're about 80000 less than the 350000 we had last week. We'd like to see more trades. But as I said, Share volume is the biggest. The more share volume we get, the more stocks we'll see moving and the higher they will run. All right, I've got some stocks I'm going to show you today. I've got three we're going to focus in on, and then I've got about three, I think, that I didn't focus in on, but I want you to know what they are and why I think they have a possibility of running. So let's go take a look at those right now. I am excited to share this stock with you because it is hot. This is ticker CZNI, Cruzani Inc. This stock is on the internet everywhere. It is the buzz no matter what forum you go to. They're talking about it being the next TSPN slash Humble. Do you remember that reverse merger? That was huge, ran for days, made people a lot of money. And they're saying the same thing about CZNI. Why? Because they had a reverse merger with a operating company in business, not a startup. Well, you didn't hear about it? Well, it wasn't today. It wasn't yesterday. They put it together last month and closed it on the 29th. Now you're going, wait a minute. So two weeks ago they closed it and the stock is running now? That's what I believe. And I'll tell you why in my layman's opinion. The price of the stock at the time of the news was triple zero two. Folks, that's a very, very risky price. All it has to do is go to triple zero one and you've lost 50% of your investment just like that. The other factor is, is that they take a long time to get out of the triple zeros. They can take a lot of months or even years. So that's what I think held it back. But today it started inching up. The last few days it's been inching up. And today it's just about ready to crest out of the triple zeros into the double zeros, which was when I think it's going to really run. I think second and third gear are going to get hit and we are going to run. Now let me show you what attention she was getting today. Right here, CZNI did 3.4 billion shares today with 2,537 trades. That is kicking, folks. Now, how many people do you think it took to make that many trades? 100 people? No, <laughs> more than that. 500? No, more than that. At least 1,000. I'm sure we all agree it's a minimum of 1,000 and most likely more. Well, folks, that means there's 1,000 people trading around this company right now moving a ton of shares, getting strong gains, and putting it right where the money tree is going to start bearing fruit. This is a stock we need to watch. So, she finished today at triple zero nine with 80% gains on the pink tier and current, 
has a transfer agent verified, but not yet a verified profile. And we do want to see both ticks here. This is verified information you get from the OTC market that they do in the background. I don't know exactly what it is, but I like to see it's been looked at because you don't get a lot of verified information with pinks. However, in saying that, this company is a fully audited company. They don't use disclosures. Most pinks do. A disclosure is just management doing the numbers and giving them to you. That's not a licensed CPA. This company uses a CPA and uses 10 Qs and 10 Ks. So they're more trustworthy and more transparent, even though they're a pink. Now, because of the reverse merger, they are no longer a franchise development company. They're doing something new, and I'll explain what that is when I show you the news. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, not bad at all. She normally does just under a billion shares a day. That's her daily average, 854 million. You can tell she's not being ignored by any means. And today she did about three and a half times as much. Now, three and a half times as much doesn't sound like much. But folks, look at the number, <laughs> 3.6 billion. That's a ton of shares. Speaking of a ton of shares, their float is killer. 15.6 billion. Oh my God. So I wouldn't be considering this for a long hold because that's just screaming reverse merge or uh, reverse split. So no, I wouldn't look at this for a long hold. And it would be nice to have a small float for a run. It would help the price move faster. But you know what? Whether the train is going fast or slow, I really don't care. As long as it's going in the right direction and I end up green on the other end, I'm all happy with it. Financials, they've got absolutely nothing going on here not annually or quarterly. And all their disclosures have to do with this reverse merger right now. Now, if you were over at Twitter, and they've got a ton of tweets about this. Honestly, you go and look under top, you can't even get to yesterday's tweets. There are so many tweets from today. It just goes on and on and on. Well, if you wanted to get information and you came over here, you'd see there's no news. That's from 2019, and there's nothing more current here. And you can find it in disclosures, but the fact remains there is a press release. There is. Cruzani is not making use of it. It is up to them to be able to put videos on here, news on here. They can put a lot of information on here voluntarily. They're not doing it. But there was news. So even though you didn't see the news here, it doesn't mean it didn't exist. Sometimes you actually have to leave the OTC markets. So I did a search. And I found this. As I said, it was on the 29th, as you can see right there. Baumo Inc. completes the reverse merger with Cruzani Inc. Baumo Inc. is a New York City-based HR tech company. They are pleased to announce the execution of the agreement and plan of merger with Cruzani Inc., an OTC fully reporting company. They tell us that their final destination, what their real plans are, is to build a unicorn in the HR tech market, one of the fastest growing, most capitalized in the U.S. It is a very, very hot sector. And if you don't understand what they mean by unicorn, that's a term you use when you say our stock is going to go 10 times or 100 times up fast. And that's what TSNP did. It just took off really quick. Now, they give us a little information here about what Baumo is. They tell us that Baumo is an AI-driven platform which automates the end-to-end -end hiring process, and it uses their AI-based matching engine to provide just-in-time content, resources, and tools, such as video interviewing and cultural technical assessments so that the hiring organizations can vet their candidates. It is a recruitment tool a very specialized one using AI. And they've got a lot of facets that we haven't even covered. But the important thing is, is it's hot, it's working, it's already out there, they're making money doing it. We just don't know what the numbers are yet because they're a private company. Private companies don't put out their financials for everybody to read. But now that they're a public company, we are going to see them. And now that the price is going up over 0009 in the 001 zone, folks, You've got to believe this is going to run because 001 is a hot price to buy in on. 001 goes to 002, you've doubled your money. Goes to 3, you've got another 100%. 4, another 100%. You buy at this price now, every digit it moves up is a 100% gain. Why buy at 003 and have to go to 006 and 009 to get 100 and 200%?
follow me. So right now is a great opportunity. Let's go take a look at that chart and see what 0002 to 0009 looks like and how fast it did it and how fast you think it's going to climb the next zone of zeros before we hit a penny. Naturally, we are using Thinkorswim to do our charting on these stocks. It's a free trading platform if you need one. Just run on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for a free account, keep your account open. Voila, you got yourself a free trading platform to use. So this is CZNI Kruzani. This is a six-month, four-hour chart. We got a high all the way back here of 0015 and a low of 0001. Not too far back. It only hit it once, though. Hasn't hit it before, but that's the basement. That is the floor right there. You can see the volume has definitely picked up here since, what's the date? Well, that is the first week of June, and it was the last week of June they closed the deal. So there was probably a lot of news starting up here, but you don't see a lot of price action. Just a nice bump right there. Then she went flat again, and now she is starting to take off. Technicals on the four-hour look very hot. 20-day, one-hour, perfect picket fence straight across and this is why most people don't like to play triple zero stocks because most of the time it takes a long time going up and down up and down up and down before it goes one more digit up and then goes up and down up and down for a long time and it can take months to get all the way up to the double zeros but this that is a beautiful launch she was here uh she was on the seventh four days ago down at triple zero two and is now at triple zero nine Folks, that is a 400 plus gain right there. And she is just getting started as far as I'm concerned. All of the technicals are pushing up. Whenever a technical is pushing up, it's a good thing. And they are unanimously in agreement. Five day, five minute view. Well, she is going along sideways, taking her time. But I want you to notice. Let me see if I can zoom in here on one of these. All right. I am using a special bar, folks. If my chart looks different than yours, this is the candle. That's what the candles look like. Now, there's a lot of information there, but there's different information in the Heiken Ashi bar. The Heiken Ashi is what we're using, and this shows you a lot more information. It fills in the gaps. But what you can see here is even though this looks like it's going straight across, you can see these little squares lifting. And that 10-day SMA is riding on that, and we are right at the tippy-tippy top right now. It's about ready to break out. So even though the price looks like it isn't going anywhere, the rejection, what people are buying up, is getting more and more, smaller and smaller. So it is actually moving, and we are about ready to tip into the double zeros, which is where I believe this is going to start to take off. I think people are going to get behind it. I think there's going to be a big push, and with the amount of people out there, I really think this could be hot, and I think we could get multiple days of run out of it. But do your own DD. Go see what Baumo is all about and see how excited you feel. I'm pretty excited, but then I've been holding this for a while. We're now taking a look at a company that has some real good news today, had some good strong gains. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. See, any stock under 5 bucks is a penny stock regardless of what market it's sold on. So this is sticker VLCN Vulcan Inc. Finished today at $2.24 with 40% gains. Now they don't give us a description here, but what this company does is they make recreational all-electric vehicles, two-wheel and four-wheel. And I'll give you more information about that here in just a minute. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Wow! Now that's what you call an increase. Holy cow! From 140,000 to 55 million. Well, I'm not even going to try to calculate that, folks. It's over 100 times. I know that much. Share structure. What do we got? All right. I did look this one up. Outstanding shares is 24 million. Their float is just about 17 million, which is a really good low float. Financials. We got anything going on over here? All right. These are their last quarterly reports, and you can see they're making more and more money. We got three zeros we got to throw behind here. So we got 75,000. 373,000 and now we are over a million in nine months. So the revenues are picking up and the news today just shows more promise for that to even get better. Disclosures, we got anything over here? Um, we do have one for today and that is gonna go along with the news. Uh, if we go over to the news, matter of fact, we'll just jump in over there. 
Now this is news that did not come from the company. This is news that got brought in from Global Newswire. All of this news down here is actually piped in from the OTC markets. Thank you for making my job easier. So this came out today. Vulcan receives thousands of pre-orders for its stag in first 14 days. $70 million plus of potential revenue. So here is the news that came out as it states today, July the 11th. Vulcan Inc., the first all-electric off-road power sports company, opened pre-production orders for its dealers beginning Monday, June 27th for its first all-wheel drive fully electric UTV, the Stag. That's their four-wheeler. Since then, the company has received thousands of non-binding pre-production orders, which, if ultimately finalized, would result in more than $70 million worth of revenue. While we felt confident in our ability to reach our pre-order targets, we've been pleasantly surprised to find we are achieving those targets at a faster pace than we had planned. On the heels of the better than anticipated pre-order volume, the company has already begun looking at additional solutions to overcome supply chain constraints. However, no assurances can be made that such solutions will be available to the company on the economic terms or at all. So, as you've been seeing in that video, this is a really nice four-wheel drive. They do have the two-wheel drives too, the Grunt and the Runt. Uh, these are big balloon tire uh, two-wheel drive motorcycles. And then they have that vehicle there, the four-wheel, which looks like it could go on the road, but it's not meant for the road. And it's in the U.S. They uh, is a Texas-based company. So, there was a lot of excitement around this. Volume was kicking. Price was jumping. It did pull back a little bit. Let's go take a look at the chart and see what that looks like. Six-month chart VLCN. We got a high back here of $17.96. Wow, that is huge. Wonder what was going on back then. And we had a huge fall here, a bounce and a huger fall. And now we're down here at 95 cents for a low. And right now we're at $2.24. And you can see that our technicals down here are all pushing up right now. It's tough to see that one, but they are all pushing up. As you can see, there was a ton of volume today. A ton of volume and the price kicked up and is now on top of everything. 20 day, one hour view. All right, so she wasn't doing a whole lot of activity, hanging around the 200 here. And then a couple days ago, she launched, lost everything she fought for, came right back home to that 200. That's as far as she was going to fall, right? That's where she liked to hang out. And then for the last few days, was climbing slowly. And then today, took off on the news. Volume is humongous. Technicals are looking very strong, though we do see we had a pullback just after hours. Let's get a close-up view on that. So there's the last three days, worked its way using the 50-day SMA, the yellow one, to cross the 200. You need to get on top of those big SMAs if you're going to do any serious climbing. And a day later, she took off. She was in range for launch, and she was out there. She jumped here from about $1.61, almost a full buck, about 66%, and then she fell back, and we've landed here at 40%. And she seems to be... Uh, consolidating right now just going sideways technicals all seem to be falling down now there was a big surge on the news there's probably even gonna be a dip I mean if we were to put a, a line here not that line <laughs> that's the wrong line let, let me get a line here for the bottom of our surge and the top of our surge and find the center where she's well above it now if anything I would expect maybe this to fall down to this area because it was good news, legitimate news, had lots of solid financial information in it. So I don't expect that the gains are going to fall all the way back down to the 200. I think we may see it fall back down to here to $2 and then maybe a wee bit under it, just right under it, and then come back up. And that would be the time I'd get in. I'd be looking at my technicals to see if they're all starting to turn up. You just don't want the price going up. You want your technicals going up too. So I'd keep my eye on VLCN. They do say they have more news coming out, so watch, see what comes up. Just put it on your watch list because VLCN had a big, big increase in volume share today. That was incredible. We're now looking at a Japanese company. This is Dr. Foods, Inc., ticker DRFS. 
Now, DRFS didn't have any news today, no filings of consequence. What they did have was some bombs dropped on Twitter by the CEO. And you know how tweets can make a stock run. So she finished the day at 007 with just over 44% gains. She's on the pink tier and current, and this is another company that puts out 10Ks and 10Qs. They're audited. They're not using disclosures. They have a transfer agent verified, but we do not have a verified profile yet, and they are a shell risk. That means they're in business to be making money. They're actually doing something, but they're not reporting any revenues, and that's a problem. Now, I think that's where the tweet really comes in today. When we look at the information here about the company on the OTC market, it's not very bright to say the least. And I think the tweet by the CEO puts a bright light at the end of a very long dark tunnel. I think the investors needed it and they appreciated it. So what does this company do? Well, they work over in Japan and Hong Kong, and they make specialty food products. Now, I haven't done a deep dive. I haven't seen a lot of what they do, and much of what they talk about is in Chinese. You go over to Twitter, half of the tweets are in Chinese, half of them are in English. So I couldn't get a lot of information, but I see they work with vegan products and stuff like that. So there was some activity around this stock today. What was the volume increase? About 11-fold, we went from 4 million to 41 million. Not a bad jump. Let's hope for a small float. Eh, so much for hoping. We got a huge float, 2.1 billion. A very heavy load to be carrying. Financials, we're not going to see anything here anywhere because they're a shell risk. Disclosures, well, they did have some disclosures here recently. These four four forms, these are insider purchases. I'll show you one just for the heck of it. Now, this isn't for common stock. This is for restricted shares, and I don't know anything about them, but he bought 5,000 of them at about $30 a piece. So he put out $150,000 for those. But outside of that, we don't have anything going on here, and we have nothing going on over at the news. Most current piece of news we got here is from 2018 and nothing else. So all we really have is the tweet over at the Twitter account. So this is the Twitter account of the CEO. I'm not going to try to say that name. Is Zuka, something like that. He is the CEO of WB Burgers Asia, Dr. Foods Inc., Photo Zoo Holdings, Zentrum Holdings, White Knight Company. He is the CEO of Next Meets Holdings and is a Harvard Business School alumni. So they've made a lot of deals here recently. You go look at their 10K, doesn't have any numbers on it because they're not making any money, but they've made a lot of deals. I mean, just since January, I think five or six deals that they have made and they've been acquiring all these other companies. So it is worth a look. So I'm not quite sure what this one is. Uh, this came out six hours ago. It's a new one. I haven't seen it. It says Hong Kong. Uh, let's just click the link and see what we got. All right, this is in Chinese, and they're showing some new products that I can't tell you what they are because they're in Chinese as well. Looks like fake meat, maybe. <laughs> the uh, tweet that I was talking about is right here. This is the CEO speaking. This is his Twitter account. We decided that DRFS is to go NASDAQ in the future. You know, most companies say that. The reputation of our new product, Vegan Foie Gras, is very high. We receive sales orders every day, so the mass production system will be established from now on. And I guess that's a picture of their burgers. Uh, they've got another tweet here. We changed the auditor this time. We had to do unexpected work for audit. Thus, we are still working on 10Q. At the same time, I am working on writing supply to SEC for S1 now. Now, it seems to me I saw one more here. He was talking about a lot of forms. All right, this one. The broken English makes it a little difficult for me to understand. I don't mean to be insulting. We are working on 10K for NXMH. S1 is needed to set up OTCQB, but 10K due is within this month. Thus, 10K filing, then S1 filing, OTCQB market is the process. I'd like to tell you exactly what that says. I just see there's a lot going on here, a lot of forms. However, the point is, is that the CEO is talking to us. He said we're going to the NASDAQ. No dates. Hasn't made any press releases. We need a press release. 
However, that's what's got the stock running. So let's go see what it looks like and if there's any room for more growth. That is a six month, four hour chart for DRFS. We got a high here of four cents, a low here of 0021, and right now we are at 007. It's been under the 200 all this time, pretty much under the 50 all this time as well, except for the last 10 days. Now look at how small these price bars are. Once she got on top of the 50, the price bars got double, triple the size, more price action. Once she got on top of the 200, she got more momentum and just started the launch. And all of our technicals look great. Now, what are my technicals down here? Real quickly, this is my MACD, which is pushing up and looks outstanding. My RSI, which is in near the overbought area. This is my PPO, Percentage Price Oscillator, which is a new one I am using, and the ADX, which shows me the strength of the trend. Now, with this stock, I'm gonna show you a primary pattern I use these new oscillators for, and you can see how easy it can be to use. So everything looks good on the four hour, no bout of doubt it. Let's come down to that 20 day, one hour view. So she's going flat with not a whole lot of motion, even hitting that low bubble didn't give her a whole lot of bump. But once she got over that 200, look at the size of the bars again and the momentum. Once you get that heavy gorilla off your back, boy, you can move. Now she did have a dip here for three days, went under the 50 day SMA and then launched. All the technicals look a little bit cooler, but are still very strong. Five day, five minute. All right, I want you to take notice of these timelines. They mark places on your chart for you. Now this would appear that I marked this just before this surge and after the surge, or at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, but I didn't. Truth of the matter is, I wasn't even looking at the chart when I put these lines up. I was looking at my two new oscillators down at the bottom. What these do for me, this is the pattern. I make sure to put the PPO on the top and the ADX on the bottom. And then I look for the mirror image. Can you see it here? I've drawn a line and consider this black line here, the mirror. You see how these come together like that and then go apart right there. I looked for the absolute closest spot that they got and there is when I start watching. That's to get ready, get set, and you're waiting. And as soon as they start to spread apart, the mirror image goes away, that's when you get price action. Do -do 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 -do. And then I drew a second one here just to show you they don't have to be close. We are now way up here, but the same thing occurs. They start spreading apart. As soon as they spread apart, you get more price action. Now that little dip right there was right here. But you see this pink line? That's the weekly, the blue is the daily. And we wanna keep the daily on the top, just like you do the MACD. That was a positive crossover. That told us it was gonna start growing. But the spread gave us the timing of when the growth was gonna occur. Soon as they started the spread is when it starts immediately. So we follow this blue line, cause you know, see here it's herky-jerky, up and down, up and down, up and down. And even the blue line is all over the place. You can't tell where it's gonna go. That's why you use the nice, calm pink line here to show you where the blue line is most likely heading. And it pretty much followed course here. So even though the blue line is herky-jerky, the pink tells us it is on the way down. So I look for that mirror image of it coming close. And once it starts to go up, that's when I get in. And watch your technicals. When it starts to come together, like here, when this starts falling, you get a price fall, get out. So I'm using this to teach myself about these patterns so that I can recognize them and use them to my benefit. So we had a bounce under the 200 and then she has been climbing and we lost about 50% of our gains today. This is the beginning of the, the surge today and this is the top of the surge. And I found roughly, I just eyeballed it, but you can do it mathematically. But she is right around the 50, can be on top, can be underneath, as long as she's hanging on to 50% of her gains, it looks strong to me. There's a seven, eight out of 10 chance she's gonna stay here and probably start working her way back up rather than falling. If she goes under that and isn't even hanging on like a monkey to the bars, she could fall all the way down to the next strongest SMA. Now our technicals, 
We got a crossover starting right now on the MACD. RSI is pushing up, but it is weak right now. And can you see the fish lips there? They are bowed out and then out like that. So it looks like it is just about ready to start growing again. So you would keep your eye on this. If that starts to bow out, you know you should probably get in and take a gain. Now, one thing I want to mention before we leave this stock, DRFS, CEO mentioned they wanted to put it on the NASDAQ. Didn't give us a time frame or anything. But food for thought, you have to be $3 to reach the NASDAQ. We are at 007. Now, just to make the math easy, let's call it a penny. That would have to go up 300 times the value to get to $3. And the only way you do that is with a reverse split. Now, they've got a ton of shares, what, 2.1 billion or something? And I told you, you see huge numbers, it's just screaming reverse split. So if they want to go to the NASDAQ, they'll have to do a minimum of a 1 to 300 reverse split. So if you have 300 shares, you're going to be left with one share after this is done. So yeah, it's great they're going to the NASDAQ, but if you're invested beforehand, you got nothing left when you get there. So if you're interested in this stock because it's on the NASDAQ, wait until they get there. Chances are after the split, it will fall. From people being upset, you'll be able to get a great price. Then all the major marketers will start investing because they understand when these stocks come on the market with reverse splits, they do fall. And they'll wait for it to hit the floor. And then everybody will start buying in and it will climb from there. Right now, would I expect to climb? Well, everything looks like it's about ready to, so I would keep my eye on DRFS as well. As I'm trading through the day, I see a lot of stocks that catch my attention. They may have great headlines, be strong runners, or there's just something unique about them that you want to pay attention to. But because of time constraints, I can only show you a few stocks and dive into them. So what I'm going to do now is just go over a few of the stocks that I was looking at today and what their catalyst was, and then you can pick up the ball from there. So one of them is MBRI, North Bay Resources. Uh, they finished the day at a tremendous buy price, double zero one. They had 150% gains today. They had news. The news today says that there was a change of control. NBRI and 4D Minix have had a transaction. And then they go on to tell us that the company will be making additional announcements over the coming weeks in respect to several important value adding enhancements to the business model. So you'll want to keep an eye on this one. This company here, ENJYQ, the Q on the end means it's gone bankrupt. This is Enjoy Technology. Today is the first day that they were kicked off of the NASDAQ for going bankrupt and they were thrown down to the OTC market like a dungeon. So today is their first day and they fell hard today and their warrant. So this is a heads up folks. All these bankrupt plays that keep coming down to us and there's a bunch of them seem to run for silly reasons initially before they get into the basement. So keep your eye not only on the stock ENJYQ, but look at ENJWQ, which is a warrant and it's even cheaper than this. And these things will run for no apparent reason. So watch the volume on this. It is the new bankruptcy play. The last one I want to show you, we looked at uh, maybe a week ago. They had some strange filing come out that said they were restructuring their share structure. And boy, did they ever. It's still very weird, but it's on the market, folks. It's on the market. They have a one million float, but they also only have one million outstanding. There are no insider shares. Nobody but us owns shares in this company. Management owns absolutely nothing. But there could be paperwork and delay. There could be stuff that I just don't see yet that isn't out here yet. But in either case, this is a one million float. So with MOBO on your list, you may see this start moving one day. And with a million in the float, you could catch yourself a huge gain. Well, I've enjoyed sharing my time and my DD with you. I hope you just don't take my word for anything I've said here. These are my own opinions that I'm expressing. I can't tell you what to do. I'm just telling you what I would do and what I see. I see a lot of potential in the stocks we shared today. I think most of them should be on your watch list. Watch the volume. And hey, check out those new osculators, the PPO and the ADX. Put them at the bottom of your charts. 
PPO on the top, ADX on the bottom, and watch that hourglass. Watch that mirror image and see if you can catch yourself a trade. God, I hope you do. If you do, let me know. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.